Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here, ready to continue on in the Union campaign here in Ultimate General Civil War. This is the Battle of Malvern Hill. It was the final battle of the Seven Days campaign. Uh, historically, it was a tactical Union victory, though it did mark the end of the uh, offensive toward Richmond, and shortly thereafter, McClellan withdrew from the peninsula. Uh, so strategically, obviously, it was a part of a larger Confederate victory in the Seven Days Campaigns. I'm going to have about a 9,000-man advantage on the battlefield with about equal numbers of guns. However, uh, the way that this battle is set up for a large portion of the battle, I'm going to probably be outnumbered. Uh, a lot of my reinforcements are not going to come until later in the fight. So I'm going to basically have to hang on for dear life early on in the battle. And if I do that, if I hold on well early, I think I'll end up turning this into a pretty big route by the time it's all said and done. So uh, we'll see how that goes. I kind of feel like I want to get... I'm just kind of looking at, at who I've got here. I want to get as many of the units that have Springfield 1855s as I can here at the beginning. Just looking to see where they are. Maybe I don't have any more. Alright, so I guess we stick with Hampton. Even though he's got fewer men. Alright, so this is how it's going to go down to start here. And like I said, just got to hang on for dear life. I think they're going to come in pretty quick. So I need to make sure that I have my men in position. Yeah, I don't think I want to do that. Just because I don't like occupying fortifications when it spreads your unit out that thin so let's do this let's just kind of bring these guys along right here I'm actually gonna send Wraith down and around and try to use him to flank So not a lot of cover here. I don't know if I back Hampton's Legion up if I'll have more cover. Yeah, there's just not a lot of cover anywhere unless I jump into this fortification. There is a, a melee bonus for occupying the fortification, so maybe I'll go ahead and do that after all, and then I'll just I'll keep Archer as kind of a backup to that. So in case they do get overrun there, we'll be okay. Alright, so Wraith's going to go right here on the edge. Oh, that part, that part of the battlefield is not open up yet. Okay. So we need to hold off on that. But I don't think he's ready to engage me quite yet anyway. You can kind of see here... Um, yeah, he's got me by about 11,300 men right now. And a whole lot more guns. But I think he's going to wait a while to engage. So we'll kind of drop out here and come back when the fighting commences. Alright, 32 minutes to go in the first uh, phase of this battle, and he's starting to get in position. A couple things about the Battle of Malvern Hill. Uh, this was very much about artillery, this battle. Uh, in fact, some Confederate commanders after the battle estimated that half of their 6,000 or so casualties that they suffered at Malvern Hill were as a direct result of Union artillery. Uh, Henry Hunt, who was the chief of artillery for the Union, did a masterful job at coordinating his artillery in this battle. There were a number of units on the Confederate side that weren't even really engaged uh, with the Union infantry that nonetheless suffered a lot of casualties because of the artillery. All right, so I guess we've moved on to part two already. So now let's pause for just a second because I've got some reinforcements. 
I'm not going to worry about covering this bridge yet because I don't think he's going to go that way. So I'm going to bring these guys up. I'm going to bring this artillery up as well. And then I'm going to send two brigades over here into these woods. And I'm going to try to get up on his flank when he brings in that attack. But I do want to have a decent back up here. I want to make sure all of my units have backup so they can uh, support any melee assaults that happen. About 55,000 men uh, on the field for each army in this battle. They're pretty evenly matched. I don't think the Confederates engaged nearly that many on their side. And this was the first time and the only time in all of the Seven Days campaign where the Union had all five of their corps available and on the field, though I don't believe McClellan was there. He kind of helped oversee the, the battle plan and then basically left it to Fitz John Porter to kind of run the action on the field. Because of the way the terrain is, and you can kind of see that with the uh, the river here and everything, the Confederates largely fought two separate battles, one up here and then one over on the eastern part of the battlefield that was under Stonewall Jackson. And here he comes, over here. He's sending three brigades. But I've got Archer here to help back him up. And then Schaefer as well. They've knocked, knocked Froebel out of the... Uh, fortification there. But that's why we have backup. And then backup to the backup. There's D.H. Hill's division. One of his brigades actually suffered almost 50%. I think it was like somewhere between 40 and 45% casualties in this battle. A lot of it was because of artillery. This was also, I believe, the first significant action where the Union Irish Brigade kind of really started to make a name for themselves. So maybe we'll uh, rename one of these units the Irish Brigade. We'll see who performs well after this fight. Colonel Archer's killed. Hopefully that doesn't affect his performance too much there, that brigade. All right, let's get Froble back up there. See how my flanking is doing. Pretty good. So we're going to get them. Once these guys get engaged here, maybe we'll come out of these woods and hit him. So it's, I've got such a narrow area to defend between these two rivers makes it easy to just kind of plug in there and then use my extra units on the side. So thus far, um, only about 700 casualties for me, about 1,200 for him. So very early in this battle. This really wasn't, I mean, compared to a lot of later battles in the Civil War, the casualties weren't that high. I think only about 3,000 on the Union side. Another melee attack, but he's not attacking. He really ought to be hitting me everywhere at once. By doing this one thing at a time, it allows my other brigades to support and defend the unit being attacked. Makes it pretty easy for me.
All right, those guys are almost in position now. Speed things up a little bit for the time being here. He's just got so many men coming down on me. He's got me by about 13,000 men right now. If he's smart, he would use those numbers to his advantage and try to get around my flanks. But in order to do that here, he's got to go all the way around and come down here. Okay, let's let Tombs get up here and engage before I spring pond on him. Alright, looks like he's going to come this way instead. He doesn't know what to do. Make sure my guns are staying supplied. Alright, we'll come out. We'll hit this guy. Because if we take him out, then I can kind of move forward a little bit. Here comes an assault, maybe. Wow, a lot happening with Schaefer over here. My goodness, he's very heavily engaged. Okay, we drove tombs off. I want to be cautious, though. I don't want to advance up here too far just yet. I'll wait till I get my next batch of reinforcements. So about 1,600 casualties for me, about 4,000 for him. And like I said, I, I just felt like if I could hold this ground until the end of this part of the mission, uh, or this current mission, uh, I feel like I'll get those reinforcements and then I can kind of fold him up and maybe get him bottled up in here and just really cause some significant casualties. Alright, we got ammo issues over here, so let's get over here and get these guys resupplied. I don't know what Garland's doing, but he's going to get lit up because of it. So he's basically avoiding this side because of these guys. Maybe we'll back them into the woods so he doesn't see them anymore. So he's basically keeping everybody bottled up right up in here. All right, I see what's going on over here. 
So I didn't leave anybody to cover that bridge, so he did sneak somebody around over there. But that's not a problem. In 37 minutes, I'm getting reinforcements, and we'll cover that, that side. I can turn Frobel around as well if I need to. Really got them bottled up right here now. I'm gonna move the woods up just a little bit. Hopefully I can get some canister fire going. Come on, Woods. He's about to get a nice shot off here. All right, now we just gotta drive these guys off. I'm a little worried here. I just moved up my guns, and now I don't have a backup brigade here anymore. A little concerned about Barksdale overrunning Archer. Just gotta hang on for 10 more minutes and then get my next batch of reinforcements. All right, once I get those reinforcements, I'll go ahead and fold this flank up and start trying to wrap him up. He's really bottled up in here. All right, Archer's breaking. That's right, I'm going to plug Stewart in over there. Get him face the right way first. Then he can do an oblique move. Okay, last part of the battle. Now we're going to even the numbers out some here. All right, casualties. Oh, here comes the next reinforcements. Now I have the advantage in manpower. Uh, I've lost about 3,200 men. He's lost about 8,000. I think I need to hold all three to win. Yeah, either east or west will do.
Really good day for Hampton's Legion. 1,100 kills, 233 deaths. O'Hare, excellent day. Paper Caller, they've suffered a lot, but they're really spread out. So I'm not real surprised by that. Just because of the position they're in. Taylor's getting back across the bridge. So I moved Bruce's battery up here to the front. We're going to see how effective they are. Bayard, 1,100 kills. Those are Napoleons. I think Bruce might be my six-pounders. No, those are Napoleons, too. Woods has the six-pounders. Right, we need to get up here and resupply. And there's my cavalry. This is where we'll really start turning the tide and inflicting some casualties. See, Hampton's Legion seems weak there, but what I've got is a nice field of fire. So when anybody hits me right there, he's getting hit from three sides. But I will come up and, and get a stronger, a fresh brigade in here for Hampton in a minute. Same with Schaefer. Very heavily engaged. Good day for you, Hampton, but uh, you've done enough.
I'm gonna drop drop some of these uh, units that have heavily engaged out. Let these fresh ones take over. So, uh, 5,000 casualties for me. He's up over 14,000 now. I definitely want to try and push his casualties over 20,000 if I can. drop Appler back just to guard the objective. And I'm going to send these three across the river. And finally get my cavalry up here. They're not going to really be able to do much in the limited time I've got them. But we'll see if there's somebody we can maybe gobble up with the cavalry. Maybe get up here and take care of Sims. Oh, look at that. Taylor's still around. Kind of surprised me with that. Got an ammo issue here we need to deal with. Sims, you're about to get descended upon by 2300 cavalrymen not entirely sure how Colquitt is still standing
He's trying to get his supplies out. See how many of those I can grab. Don't fire, Pew. All right, grabbed one. Grab two. Now let's go for three. If I can find them, there they are. Perfect. Now Pew, you're just gonna sit on these supplies up here. Forty-five minutes to go. I've got him two to one at this point. Charge those guns. Alright, I think we wiped out. Yeah, we did. That unit over there is gone. Alright, it's all over but the final score, as they say. So let's just speed things up to the end here. All right, let's see how this one ended up. I don't think, yeah, it won't let me keep it going, but here we go. Uh, so I had 49,000 men, 2,200 cavalry, 2,100 in my artillery. He had about 10,000 fewer, maybe 7,000 fewer. Uh, 9,900 infantry lost for me, five guns, 143 cavalry, 25, almost 26,000 infantry lost for him. So I'll take it. Grab some supplies as well. That's always helpful. But as always, as the Union, you're not going to grab anything too great as far as guns go. I did get some 1842s, but at this point I'm trying to get away from those as much as I can for as many units as I can. Oh, good. I gained George McClellan as well. And the history guy finally promoted to Major General. So that's good news. So let's look ahead. All right, so he's getting 25,000 men, so basically it was a wash as far as the casualties go because he got enough to kind of keep him going. But the training number went down, so that's helpful. Uh, we're going to be looking at Kettle Run, Thoroughfare, Thoroughfare Gap, and then Second Bull Run. And honestly, unless something changed with the release of the full game, 
Second Bull Run is about as easy a battle as you could possibly fight as a Union. It's real simple to get around his flank and win that one in like 15 minutes. But maybe they've changed some things to make it a little harder. I guess we'll see. But in the meantime, let's take a look here at... I think I'm good right now on uh, Army Organization. Let's see what we take. I think Kettle Run's one of those battles you only take a few brigades into. Yeah, I'm only taking seven there. And then I'm going to be taking... Ten to Thoroughfare Gap. So those are both really small battles. So there's not a lot to be gained with the extra career points being put into Army Organization right now. So I'm starting to think, though, that logistics I'll go a little bit and training. And, of course, we'll have to get everybody kind of refit and ready to go here. But I should be in good shape moving forward. But as always, I welcome your input, your comments, your questions, your observations. And uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, as always, for supporting this channel. If you'd hit that thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And leave your comments below. would love to talk to you about the battle, about the Civil War, about history, about anything at all. Have a great day, everybody.